Oh, that's the voice of one guy that I tell you, I never got tired of going to see this man perform. T.K. Hewlin on the line with the Ross Report. T.K., thanks so much for being with us today. You can't tell, I cannot tell you how much of a thrill this is for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for calling me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, and of course, what made me think of this, and I thought, well, why haven't I done this before? Because... You and Gigi were contemporaries. You both uh, had great following in South Louisiana and beyond, and uh, both were sort of the the kind of most important in in my book voices in the, oh, the thank swamp you. pop. Well, yeah, you and T uh, K and Gigi. I mean, everybody. All they all you had to know was those those four initials, T K and Gigi. You know, I mean, it was yes, uh, yeah. it was really amazing. Yeah, Gigi was the. Um did you one of a kind? He was um I'm kind of Go ahead, TK. Paul. Go ahead, babe. Kind of rough, you know. Um, uh, I'm sorry. It's so, yeah. It's okay. It it is tough thinking about this and thinking about the passing of an era, really. Um Yeah. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, um it's not a, you know, it's not a be the same, you know, um I know. We've been now, you know what, TK, it seemed to me you all were friendly rivals, even in your earlier years, and you got to be even friendlier as uh, as you both matured and mellowed, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we've been, we've been uh, friends for years, and uh, it's like family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like family. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. You know, uh, the last time I saw you, you were playing at, uh, you were playing Rhythms on the River, and I remember uh, Gigi was there, and he had had some health issues. You, you could tell he was a little unsteady. But as I recall, he did one, a song with you all, didn't he? Didn't he do one song with you? As I remember, yes. Yeah, we did a bunch of so we did a bunch of songs together. Um, you know, he was, he'd been sick for about uh, close to a year. Yeah. And uh, but he, he never could tell on stage. He was um, unbelievable. Uh, you know, I went to see him about two and a half weeks ago. You know, and uh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's been it's been hard. It's been tough on the family. Yeah. Now, where was he living? Was he living in Monroe? They said. Yeah, he lives he lives in Monroe, and his wife uh, Sandra. Uh -huh. And it's been tough on the whole family and me myself, yeah. as you can tell. Uh, oh yeah, I know. Uh, because it's like uh, you know we've been together for so long and uh, playing different places, and Gigi was very, very well-loved by everybody. Oh, yeah. You everybody. too. Hey, you too. <laughs> Let me tell you, people, uh, these two, and, and, and I know maybe some of our younger, there's Brandon's there. I don't know if you ever uh -huh. heard, Brandon, did you ever hear these two play? In oh, their yeah. Head? I mean, you I, did? I, I didn't All get right. the pleasure of hearing them in person, oh. but I certainly heard them, uh, heard them play their music. Well, let me tell you something. It, back in the <laughs> day, back in the day in the late 60s, and I would say maybe early 70s, but definitely the late 60s, when the era of the big clubs and the swamp rock, swamp pop, you know, the big, the big uh -huh. bands, the brass, and the, the great personalities like T.K. Hewlin and G.G. Shin, those are the things that yeah. I remember when I first came to Louisiana, and I, and I was hooked. I was hooked on the music from then on. Oh, yes. But we had always, you know, me and G.G., when we played together, I always had four or five horn section. You know, we had we had a big band, and uh, right. did he play with me off and on for years and years and years? But we kept in touch. When he started, uh, he went to you know, to a chase. He went all over Japan, and he went to Vegas. He came back, but every time every time he came back, you know, we he, he joined uh, he joined my band. And we played together for a long, long time, and. Yeah. Uh, Yep. And, and uh, he, had know, a, uh, he had a long career with the Boogie Kings, too, didn't he? Yes, he did, with the Boogie Kings. And then when he first started, uh, did you first started playing music? Uh, the name of the band was the Flat Tops. When he <laughs> really? Was seven, when he was 17. Uh -huh. I, I met Gigi when I was 17, and Gigi was like 20, 21. Wow. And we've been close ever since. And uh, The Flat Tops. Now, uh, I never heard that one. I mean... Uh, when I, was, when, 
Yeah, when I <laughs> came, was it was the Boogie band. Kings. Yeah, the Boogie Kings were the big were the big thing, and Smoke, T.K. Hewlett and Smoke. I mean, right, everybody right, in New York right. too. Now, what were some of the great clubs that you all used to play? How did well? First of all, oh let me get... my God, we <laughs> we played about just about every club from here to New Orleans, from here to Houston. Uh, Signorellas was probably the, yeah. the known one. Signorellas and uh, did you play the, with me at Signorellas? We played back to back. We play clubs in Texas and in the New Orleans area. Club, Lu- about- Club Louisiana, huh? Okay. That was Club Louisiana Lu- in New Iberia. Yeah, Club exactly. Lu- I remember that one. Did you all ever play the swinging machine? I don't remember seeing you all at the swinging machine. I know the, I, the Purple oh, Peacock. I, I, I remember Purple Peacock. Right, but I've been to the swinging machine many times. The Purple, <laughs> the purple Peacock, oh, my God, yes. That's <laughs> yeah, that the was... Evangeline Club in Ville Platte. Yes, another one. Amazing. I, uh, how did you get I'm, started in music? Let's start with you, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Gigi. How okay, did, I, how did I you started, get started? I started at 13 years old. Wow. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was it's it was my brother was supposed to play and go practice with the band, and I went along with my brother to practice just to, just to watch him practice, not knowing that I was going to be the singer. Because I was singing at 13, and I went, and, and and my brother went too, and he said, "Look, well, your brother can sing better than you, so let's let's hire TK." <laughs> oh, I bet that made your brother real happy. Huh? <laughs> so you were 13 what years old. What was the name of your was, group? What was the name of your group back TK then? TK and the the Lonely Nights. Oh my lord, the Lonely Nights. Yeah. TK, the Lonely Nights, and. Uh, uh, we we got together and I started my first record was uh, at thirteen. Uh, the name of the song was Many Lonely Nights, and the other side was I'm a Little Bitty Boy, boy. And uh, so we played uh, for years and years and years, and we changed the name to TK and Smoke. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I had a club. I had a club in 1960, 64 through sixty eight. And it burned down, and when it burned down, I called it TK and smoke, and it got stuck <laughs> with me. Ever I remember since. that. It was it was it in St. Martinville. St. Martinville, yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, because there were a lot of rumors about oh, uh, what happened, <laughs> and to be but we won't talk about that. We will not talk about that. I remember that very no. well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it said here that uh, you formed uh, the the LK label, and uh, your father, yeah, was- your father, and a local songwriter, Robert Thibodeau. Robert Thibodeau wrote all my wrote all my songs that uh, many you know long, many nights and also graduation night and my biggest song was I'm not a fool anymore. Yeah, that let's listen not- just for a minute to that. I got it right here, queued up. And- <laughs> anymore. Oh yeah, now that that's what we used to call it, good belly rubbing music, <laughs> good slow dancing music. <laughs> All that is since it rained, not from the skies. You know, TK, you're not going to believe who I have on the line right now. A young man uh-huh. by the name of Keith Thibodeau. You remember Keith Thibodeau, Little Ricky on the I Love Lucy show? And Keith was in a number of bands here, including, I think, Persian Garden. Keith, welcome to the Ross Report. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, sorry I've got to be here on this sad occasion with TK, but uh, um, when I heard you had TK on, uh, um, you know, uh, those two names, TK Ulan and Gigi Shin, they, they kind of go hand in hand in South Louisiana. They sure do, and they they had such an impact on a lot of people. Uh, you you were a contemporary of the, or you were a little bit younger than them, right, uh, Keith? In fact, in fact, the, the the strange thing about it, I don't know if TK remembers this, but they used to play at Signorelli's Club. Yeah. And um, in St. Martinville, and um, he, I was like sixteen or fifteen years old, and they needed a drummer because the drummer was sick that evening. And he asked me to sit in, and that was the very first gig I played in Louisiana from California when I moved. Seriously? It was TK's. It was with TK. TK, did you hear that? Keith is talking. Keith Thibodeau is on the line, and he was talking about how uh, you needed a drummer one night at Signorelli, and you got him to sit in with them? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yes, I remember. Yeah. He's on the line right now. He hears you. Y'all can talk back and forth. Hey, Keith, how <laughs> you doing, how you man? Doing, brother? Oh, <laughs> 
Yes, man. Uh, what, what year did I hire you at the Yellow Bowl? I mean, excuse me, at the Cinderella's in the 19 what? It, you know, it was like 1966, TK. Wow. wow. I remember. But you sounded good, man. Well, I thought it, I, I mean, I was, it was like, wow, man, I was in a culture shock coming from California <laughs> and landed right there in St. Martinville with you, with you guys. You guys were so hot. And, you know, like I said, you guys are legends. You're a legend. Oh, man. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Gigi Shen, always wonderful music, top, top notch South Louisiana genre music. You know, you can't. You can't uh, deny it. You now, know? Keith, you oh, played. Thank you, man. You, thank you, man. You, you played with a group called Persian Garden. How many years did you play with them? Actually, it was uh, Carol. It was the Persian Market. Persian and, uh, Market. That's, that's yeah. Uh, the guitar player was is Doug Cochran. Who you yes, think you know yes. That's who. That's who I, I called first to say I got to get in touch with. T.K. Hewlin, and then he says, yeah, and we'll get Keith Thibodeau to call in, too. And I said, whoa, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, T- T.K. is definitely more connected than I am uh, with with the G.G. Shin, um, uh-huh. you know, his music and all that, because, I mean, they're they're more contemporaries, but, but I was a little younger, you know, but, but I mean, it, to me, it's like those guys were, like, always on the topic of conversation when we talked about in our bands and different things in, in like yeah. Louisiana. They really kind Keith, of... Are you, are, 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 Keith, are you still playing a little bit? Yeah, I am. You know, I played uh, for years with uh, with uh, David and the Giants. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. And we, uh, yeah, we we, uh, we were a Christian band in the 80s, and we were a Christian rock band. And, yeah, we're still playing together. We're playing in uh, Florida coming up this next month, and... Uh, just got back from the Philippines on a tour, so yeah. Oh, wow! Great. <laughs> great. Wow, that's great. Well, uh, Keith, where do you live now? What's your uh, home base? I live in Mississippi now. My wife and I have been married for forty-one years. Oh, congratulations! Congratulations! Wow. Man. That, wow. That, that, it is a bit of a uh, you know anomaly <laughs> to be married that long nowadays, but uh, the Lord has been good to us. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, Keith, thanks so much for calling in. Keith, I, I really, it, was nice, it was nice. to... Keith, nice talking to you, man. Yeah, God bless you guys. Thank and you. You too, Keith. Like God bless you, Thanks. Too. Hope to see you again Bye. soon Love in you Lafayette. Too, Maybe you can do a gig Bye. in Lafayette. <laughs> that All would be right. great. That would be great. <laughs> okay, TK. So, um, you know, uh, he was younger. That was a younger group, Doug Cochran and that group in the Persian market. And they looked up to you guys. You, you guys were really, you were setting the pace. You had such a loyal audience, you and Gigi both. I mean, really oh, loyal you. audience. And so I remember that Gigi tried, at, at one point, he went out to Las Vegas. And he had a gig out there for quite a while. Um, I don't remember what year that was, but that was um, mm-hmm. after he had been really well established. And I read something, in, of all things, about the Boogie Kings in Wikipedia. And they were talking about how when they first formed, they, they, um, they decided that he was a trumpeter. Gigi was a trumpeter. And they decided. Yeah, yeah. Top there, yes. Yeah, yes. they, they did, decided to feature him on vocals, and then they went and cut an album at Cosmo Matassa Studio in New Orleans. Um, uh-huh. And Sam Montel was the producer, so they thought they were going to go out to Vegas at that time. This was in like 1966. It didn't quite work out for him then, but I remember later. Later, he went out there, maybe in the 80s, the 70s or 80s. Do you uh-huh. remember? I, I, you know, I don't remember, but I remember Cosimo's in New Orleans. I recorded there a couple of times. Yeah, you, in New Orleans, yes. Yeah. Well, this this is really amazing that uh, that that Gigi. They have so much on Wikipedia about him and about you uh-huh. as well, and about the Swamp Pop uh, thing going on. Now, do you have any? Do you still play, TK? Do you still have any regular yeah, games? Yeah, I, I play. Uh, I play just festivals and casinos. Uh-huh. And I'm still doing yeah, I'm still doing about seven, eight dates a month. Uh, oh, wow. That's all I want. Uh, I mean, I'm still playing. I, I mean, I can't stop playing. It's, no, it's blood, man, it's in, in your blood. blood. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> as it was as it was with Gigi, because I remembered when I saw you all that last time on Rhythms in the River. And uh, he was walking a little slow and all that. And, and I worried when he got up on stage. But I'm telling you, you were right. When he got up on stage with you, yes. you guys were such yes. showmen. And that showmanship kicked in. You could see it. Yeah, we were just like, uh, we were gifted together, me and Gigi. It was like, you know, um, I sang with a lot of other singers, but just just not like Gigi. He, he was just special. He was so special. 
You know who we have? We have, uh, we have a, a, a guy calling in who's also a special guy. Doug Cochran. Doug, go ahead. You're on the air with T.K. Hewland. Hello, Hello. Carol. This is your friend, Doug. Yeah, who got the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Doug, how you doing? I'm doing great, sir. How you doing? Good. Well, it's kind of tough, Doug. I lost a good friend, and been, uh, it's been kind of rough. But I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting around, getting, getting, getting better. Well, I know you just got through talking to Keith, and uh, Keith and I are still friends after all these years. I was the lead guitar player in the group, and Keith was a drummer. Uh, uh-huh. uh, we're still good friends. We talk uh, at least once a month. Uh, but good. On once in a while, his mom lives here in Lafayette, and he'll come to town. Maybe we play golf or go eat lunch or something. But, um, you know, we uh, we looked up to you guys. We looked up to you and Gigi and Jerry LaCroix. Uh, we lost mm-hmm. Jerry what, about a year or so ago. Yes. Uh, and uh, Gigi and Jerry were just incredible together. Oh, God, yes, yes. That was Jerry they Count were. Jackson, for all you yeah. folks who Count remember Jackson. that. Jerry Count Jackson. Man, I tell you what. He, these, yeah, are guys, these guys are legendary. Uh, yeah, all of you. The Boogie Kings, he went with Edgar Winter, and uh, they, did, they did the White Trash album. And right. Then he went to New York and then came back. Actually, for a very short time, uh, a couple of years, he was the lead singer with Blood, Sweat, and Tears after David Clayton Thomas left. Uh, right, exactly. Uh-huh. Really? They did in the albums. But in any event, you know, we, we always looked up to you guys. Uh, you guys were the professionals. We were just the... Uh, you know, small garage band, but we we worked some harder, and we uh, played a lot in Mississippi, uh, Gulf Coast. And uh, the name of the group was the Persian Market, and mm-hmm. we actually played the night the Swinging Machine opened. I heard you talking about. The oh my! You Carol. did then. I then I saw you play before I even knew who you were. How <laughs> yeah. you like that? Uh, that was one of my every favorite night, every places. Friday night for years and years, oh, and in man. fact, we played the night it burnt down. Seriously? Come on. Oh, yeah, we think it was my amplifier that was overloaded. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I never heard that story, Doug. You've been holding out on me. I never heard that story. It originally was uh, where Outback is now. Right, it's called exactly. called the Ridge Cafe. And right. And Bo bought it and made a uh, college nightclub out of it. Oh, man, it was a hot it spot for a while. Moved it to over where, around where Chili's is right now. Yeah, it was behind but, uh, Chili's, met, yeah. Hey Doug, that was you know that was a, that was the golden years, man. That's the good old days back then. Oh yeah. You know, back in the sixties and seventies and eighties. You know, I mean, uh, it was nothing like it. The music and the horns and everything. It was it was it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, I miss I, I miss the horns. I do, I do. Yeah. Well, I I always wanted horns. We didn't have any, so you know. But uh, Keith was always a very good drummer. Uh, we yes, had Brad was. Hart, who was a good singer. Uh, we had Lee DeHart, a singer. Wow. Tommy Ransom. Uh-huh. His brother, David Ransom, is the bass player now with uh, Warren Storm with Little Band of Gold. Wow. David Ransom. Right. They're and still then, going uh, strong. You know, Eddie Begno yeah. uh, was the organ player, and I was a guitar player. So we. Uh, oh, Yes. Great memories. Hey, listen, guys, we do have to pay the bills, so we have to take a break. But, TK, if you hang on, we have other calls coming in. And Doug, I'll talk thanks to you so much. All right. See you later, Carol. Thank nice you, Doug. Oh, you take care. Bye-bye. Okay, right. Doug. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, brother. Y'all hang on. We'll be right back after this short break, and we want to talk more with TK. And we got Cliff. We got you hanging on. We'll get you in, I promise. Stay with us on the Ross Report. Remember this one? Oh yeah, a little GG Shin, a little memory. Walk down the memory lane with TK Hewell and a dear, dear friend of GG Shin. I tell you what, that was some energy and some charisma on stage. And TK, you had it too. You definitely had it too. I, it always amazed me. It amazed me the the, the different styles of music, you know, that 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 I found in South Louisiana, and it's so organic. I mean, it's like from the soil up. So many musicians surrounded by music, just amazing. We got a Cliff thank on the you. line. Thank Cliff. you, thank you, Cliff. I don't want you to wait any longer. You're on the line with the, you're on the Ross Report with TK Hewland. Go ahead, Cliff. Hey, Miss Ross, how's it going? It's going great. Go ahead. Hey, Mister Hewland. <laughs> How are you doing? 
I'm doing all right, my friend. Hey, listen, I got a question. Go ahead. Do you remember a couple of Cajun fiddlers by the name of Rufus Thibodeau oh, and my. Tony Thibodeau? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's my relative. That's my cousin Rufus and my uncle Tony. And Rufus I got to tell you, I got to tell you that listening to this show has brought back all kinds of memories. <laughs> I hadn't thought about, I hadn't thought, uh, man, it, and it's sorry to say because that was my family and I loved them dearly, but I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that music in, in, in a good minute. And, uh, yeah, just hearing you speak and all of the, all of the places that you've been, man, I've been to them places. <laughs> you know, Thank you. I've been to them places, you know? Yeah. yeah, and 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 uh, 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 it brings up the memories of uh, Mr. Joel Sonier. That was one of the best bands that my uncle Tony played with. And brings mm -hmm. up uh, Jim C. Newman that my cousin played with, Rufus played with. Right. And uh, I just, it, it just, uh, I, I got to tell you that I'm, I'm very proud of the music that has come out of Louisiana. Oh, you bet. And I'm very proud. Now you are a representative of that of that music of uh, of that genre, because oh, thank I mean, you. as as Miss Ross said, it is it, it's grassroots from the ground up. Yep, it sure is. You know, thank you very, and, very much. Thank you. Uh, oh, I, I just got to tell you. Uh, I mean, I, I can I can remember going to family reunions. And uh, having the Fatras play on one end of the of the, of the concert, the and, my uncle, and my uncle Tony and, and Joel Sonier and all of them play on the other side, and then we just got a big old Cajun state do at a family reunion, you know. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, you're right? bringing and, back a lot of just, memories. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! And yeah. uh, I just I, I really want to thank you and Miss Ross. Thank you for bringing on Mr. Keith oh. Kiki. I tell you what, I don't know uh, yeah, why yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do this sooner. To tell you the truth, he is such an icon in my in my book. He's an icon with Gigi. And oh yeah. When, and, and, oh yeah. And just Gigi Shan. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, I just, thank just, you. I, I, I think I'm gonna try to make my way to the Poussière and Bridge this weekend. <laughs> That was okay. another place, another uh, poussière. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, some of these places are legendary. You know, um, some of the places have been documented by Philip Gould and um, and uh, Fusley, uh, Herman Fusley, with the uh, Herman, yeah. yes, he's done. They've done a lot of documentation of these uh, of these um, roadhouse. You call them roadhouses, uh, you mm -hmm. know, like Hamilton's Club here in Lafayette. That was one of them. Hamilton's was a was a big club. Uh, it's, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. I remember. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so let me get back to something that when you did you early in your career, did you and Gigi play together? Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, off and on, uh, Gigi played. He had his own band. I had my own band. Right. And and then Gigi would go, and then he went to Chicago. Yeah. He came back, and then he moved back to Lafayette, and he, he joined the band again with my band, and uh, off and on about two or three times that you would play. And then we played together with different bands. Yeah. Just us two together. We played with uh, Luzian Express at the casinos and, 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 and festivals. Right. And, uh, right. So the, we, festivals, we did, the festivals are a are pretty big part of, uh, of uh, the income for a lot of bands these days, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the casinos, and, we, and the casinos. The casinos, thank God for the casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but a lot anyhow, of, yeah, a lot of musicians. We, we, yeah, we right. did a lot of things, a lot of shows together, me and Gigi, uh, you know, and then we were ducked to the Hall of Fame in uh, Port Arthur. I can't remember the date. It's been years ago. And then the Hall of Fame in Baton Rouge, uh, me and Gigi were there too. So, you know, we part, we, we've been around. Oh my God. I'm, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss it. Yeah. But you know what? You know. You're still, you're still a great representation for that. They, they, they described you on Wikipedia. They described you as the voice with a tear. I mean, I thought that was so <laughs> cool. The voice with a tear. Listen, we have another phone call coming in. Mike, go ahead. You're on the Ross Report with TK Hewland. Go ahead, Mike. Now, that Mike, now you go. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, I just told my buddy Ken here to listen to y'all because he, he used to dance with, uh, dance with your music in Franklin, Louisiana. He had a stroke a few years back. 
But uh, you remember playing in Jay's Lounge, Kingston? Oh my God, Jay's Lounge! What do you happened? hear that? Do you hear that, TK? Do, do you remember no, playing Jay's Lounge in Kankton? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I used to go listen to Clifton Shamir. Clifton was the master of all masters. I mean, he was the... And I used to go listen to Clifton Shamir at Jay's Lounge. Absolutely. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever play there, TK? No, never did. Never played there, but I went to the rooster fights there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I went to one rooster fight there. That was all I could handle. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It was more than I could handle. But anyway, yeah, Jay's yeah. Lounge, that's another one of those legendary places that for a while there, oh, my gosh. I mean, that was the yeah. place to go. Um, there was another place. Did you ever? I don't know that Fernand Stutes ever had bands at his place, did he? I don't remember that, but he, he had quite the, the bar. Uh, Fernand Stutes, you know? You remember that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the barbershop. Yeah, door. the barbershop and the bar, and people would get married there. He was a justice the of the peace, and people would get married there. <laughs> it was, it was Come like on. A, oh, yeah. That was crazy. All right, let's see who we have next. Robbie. Hey, Robbie Bush. Go ahead. You're on with T.K. Hewland on the Ross Report. Welcome, Robbie. How, how are you? Welcome. Do, Thanks. Doing great. Uh, T T K. Yeah. I, I just want to say, man, when I played with uh, when Doug Cochran was playing with the Persian Market, I was playing with the Glass Menagerie, who uh, was managed by Ella Savoy, and we used to play at your club <laughs> every Wednesday oh <my> night. <laughs> every Wednesday night, and you know we would we would take bets as to see how many people would run up that that wire <laughs> to the telephone <laughs> pole. <laughs> and, and we'd sometimes come out of a out of a, a, a long Wednesday night, but it's usually on a Friday night. And there was always there was a car stuck up on that wire, <laughs> and we would just kind of push it off, you know, push it down, <laughs> and oh everybody went god. home. You know, it was great. Oh my god! It was great. Oh god! That and was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a lot of fun, man. We were we were a lot younger back then. So it was, yes, it was a yes. lot of fun. Yeah, but you and know, we loved here. Always loved here in GG. Yeah. And remember when actually, you know, Cochran was ta- Doug was talking about him playing with uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. But I don't think he actually ever played with Blood, Sweat, and Tears, or not very long. But he got hired uh, by Bill Chase and and Bill speaking Chase, of a horn yes. band, and they came to Lafayette, played Municipal Auditorium with. Uh, right. With his band, and that was a great, great, great concert. And it's about, uh, he could play the Sunday at the auditorium, and then the Monday night they played at Cigarelli's. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. Seriously. That's right. Which was another great club. Oh, yeah. Another it was. Club. It was. We had so Ooh, many of them, huh, Robbie? Good memories. Oh, yeah, we did. Absolutely. Well, you know, back then, I mean, everybody before uh, disco, you know, before d- disco, uh-huh. And really, DJs. Everybody hired a lot, a lot live of bands. bands. That's right. I mean, for everything, whether it was a private party or a frat party, or a, there were lots and lots and lots of clubs. I could actually make more playing music while going to college than I could with a regular job. So there was no reason to <laughs> to, 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 to ever ever work. Which my dad used to. He said, "I can't believe you're not going to get a real job." I said, "Man, this is a real job." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robbie, great memories. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate you. Well, good. Thank All you, right. and, and, and and good luck. Thanks right. for having the show. Thanks, Bye-bye. Robbie. Bye bye. I'm Mike. We got good. Mike calling in from Rain. Hey, Mike, you're on with TK Hewland. Welcome. Hey, TK. I, I want to ask you. Do you remember a guy in Rain named Gary Richard? Gary Richard? Yeah, he was uh, a contractor in the Rain for years, and and. Uh, Music, uh, musical and fine guy, yeah. but uh, I saw you one night out, and uh, the uh, were you in Italy when you were young? When, where, Wait, where was that? Were you an athlete? Were when you, you were an younger? athlete when you were young? <laughs> no, <laughs> oh no! I used to, I used to dance on the stage. I don't know if that's an athlete or not. What, that was like a workout. What TK used to do on the stage? <laughs> was, oh yeah, that was like a workout. <laughs> well, you know, you did something one night in rain about twenty or thirty years ago. That I, I, Chuck Bear was the only other person I could see do it, where he could walk across the stage, uh, you know, uh, with one one leg the out and the other one. And yeah. squatting down a duck walk or whatever you call it, I think that's that what it was. amazing strength and, and athletic ability. And still playing that young uh, instrument. And uh, anyway, I just want to remind you, Gary Richard was 
got to turn me on to you a long time ago. I love your music. I'm glad you're here from me. You're still alive. Gary died, but you're still around. So hang in there, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you. TK, you're bringing back a lot of memories for a lot of people. Listen, we're, yes. we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back on the Ross Report. 232-1542, if you want to get in on the conversation on the Raider Solutions Hotline, stay with us. TK Hulan on the line, reminiscing about the early days of music and about his good friend Gigi Shin, which we, whom we lost yesterday, sadly. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> now that's the kind, that is music. That there is music. <laughs> hey TK, you remember that one heartbreak? GG Shin. <laughs> I think he think he's enjoying Hello. listening to the music. He listening to the music, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, GG heartbreak. That's, he did, boy. I, he had a, he had a, he had a high voice, man. Wow. He could he could rip it out. He really could. But mm-hmm. you could too. You could too. So anyway. um do you remember when Gigi actually started? Was were you about the same time, or was he a little ahead of you? He was, he was uh, four years older than me. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, but but you, you were in the you were running in the same circles for a long, long time. I always thought you were kind of friendly rivals, but it turns out you were friends for a long, long time. Oh God, yes. Uh, we, uh, I mean. Um, when Gigi's first wife, you know, uh, with the kids, you know, with my first wife, we were, we were camping together and then the kids all grown, but, uh, I knew all Gigi's kids, he had five kids with his first wife. Yeah. And we were close, you know, we were dealing with camping, you know, so we've been together. We've been friends for years and years and years. Oh my God. Uh, you know, a long, long time. You know, when I hear his voice, you know, I kind of, kind of want to break down a little bit, but, oh, you know. Yeah. Hang in there, kiddo. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard for everybody. Um, I, I think, you know, it's like the passing of an era, you know, when you think about it, because you all were so associated with that that genre of music, the swamp pop and that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. all you had to say was Gigi and TK, and everybody knew what they were going to get. They were yeah. going to get a great show. They were going to get a lot of great music and uh, and have a lot of fun. And that is something, Absolutely. That, that is something that I think is sadly missing maybe in today's music. Uh, in some kind of way, I know that there's a lot of fun hip hop stuff. We, you know, we dance to that in my Zumba classes, so we have some fun with that. But there, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that there's enough of that. The the Latin music seems to be um, having a lot, a lot more of a, a, a lot more of that uplifting kind of fun stuff that we that we listen to uh-huh. with you. It made me it made me think of some of the music that you all did. That was danceable. People loved it. Right, it was, right. You know, it seems, you even you even scored, I think, with a uh, with a cover of Eddie Raven's "Alligator Bayou," huh? Uh huh. No, yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, I, he, you know, I, I changed the tempo a little bit. Uh, I recorded "Alligator Bayou," and uh, it was rush. You know, it was it was slow, and then I, I kind of put the tempo up a little faster. Eddie, Eddie wrote a couple of songs for me too, and with the Nashville, uh, I still be your friend. That the one you played earlier. Yeah, yeah, that was him. Eddie wrote that. Yeah, well, he's done. Re- he did really well. Eddie Raven. Oh, yeah. Eddie did. Eddie did really, really good. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to remember. His brother worked for the city for a long, long time, and uh, he, but he made that he made that commitment, went up to Nashville and stayed up there and did uh, did really well, songwriting especially. But, uh, oh, they, so yeah, he made a bunch. Eddie made a lot of money on that. Uh, Thank God for kids. Uh, that uh, the Oak Ridge Bars. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was number one. Wow. And, uh, Ed, 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 Ed is not. I don't think he's touring that much. I think he's writing. He, yeah. He's writing more than he, did, he's doing anything else. Did Charlene uh, Howard ever sing with your group or just with uh, with Gigi? I know she he, she sang with Gigi for a while. Did she ever sing with your uh, your group? Who's that? Charlene Howard. Oh yes! Oh my God! Yes, Charlene. Yeah. Oh God! Yes, a long time. The back to back. Yeah, the back to. That's what I was trying to think of. The back to back club in, in, in the Northgate Mall, right? Right. Right. Back and they, to and back. One side did country, and then you guys did the the rock, huh? I uh, absolutely yeah. It was yeah. Charlene played me a long, a long time. Yes. Oh yes. Happy darn. And she, then. She, 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 I forgot about uh, Gigi's club, um, 
the After Dark on Johnston Street. I'd forgotten about that one. Um, right. That was, I played that too. You did? That was a long uh-huh. time ago. That was a long yeah. time ago. Now, they talked to uh, the newspaper interview, Greg uh, Martinez, and he said the uh, first time he saw Gigi on stage, um, his parents wouldn't allow him to go to Signorelli's in St. Martinville. <laughs> the Southern I don't Coast. know why, because... Uh, because everybody at Signorella was going in at 16 and 17 uh, years old. You know, back then, it didn't matter how old you were. You got into the club. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me one time, because when I first came down here, it did surprise me. And so I said, yeah, all these young kids. And he said, look, if you're old enough, if you're tall enough to put the money on the bar, they're going to serve you. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, yeah, I'm in the right place. So Signorelli's in St. Martin of the Southern Club in Opelousas, that was a big one. Oh. Oh, the Southern Club, the, the uh, Evangeline Club in Ville Platte, and, uh, yep. and on and on and on and on. I mean, my yeah. God, I mean, Greg there's Martin no more is, clubs to play at. Greg Martinez said, you know, he never, when he finally got to see Gigi, he said, and this is a quote in the paper, I'd never heard a white man sing like that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, my God. A whole lot of blue-eyed soul, huh? A whole lot. Yeah. You yep. and Gigi Bird. Yep. Well, I hope we get to see you in concert again very soon, TK. Okay. We tell me where's your next gig. That that's that would be a good question, so everybody can go see you. Do what now? Your next gig. Where are you going to play again? Uh, the Shrunk Festival, not this Sunday, but next okay. in, in Delcom. Okay. That's a good it's gonna one. It's going to be me and me and Charlene and Warren Storm and Willie T. Serious. And Steve Adams. Serious. What, yeah, what time really. are you playing? Uh, God. Oh, we play at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, not the, on the 19th of August, not this Sunday, but next, I think, uh, at, 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 in, in Delcom at 12, 12 to 4. Well, I can tell you who's going to want to be there, and that's my husband, Ron Gomez, who always thought the world of you guys. You know, Ron was in the music business for many years. D- totally How's he doing? He's doing fine. He's doing real Good. well. He's had some, some challenges, you know, but he's doing really well, and... Uh, you know, he played a different genre from you all, but always, always had so much. We always loved to go see you guys and 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 watch you play. You know, he uh, he yeah, you know he yeah. played. You remember the old Stardust on Cameron? He had a regular. Oh God, gig, yes. right. right. He had a regular gig at the Stardust on Cameron Street. Yeah. No longer well, there tell, anymore. Tell your husband I said hi because it's been years since I've seen him. I know it has been a long uh, it, time. It was, it was always a pleasure when he would come listen to me in the. He said, man, I don't know what you're doing around here. You ought to be somewhere in Vegas or somewhere. On the, the, I said, man, I love it out here. I love it. I love it out here. You know, I've been, I was on tour, you know, for in the 60s, and I got back from tour in the 60s, and I said, this is not my, this is not my deal. Yeah. I, you know, I love the people around here, and I've been around here for years. Yeah, this is, you know what? Uh, it's kind of like it gets in your blood. You know, I was on my way to California when I stopped off here, <laughs> and I, just, I, never went, I never went any farther. It's like it just gets into your blood, and you love it so much. And, uh, you know, I, that, was, uh, that was a long time ago. Tommy, Tommy is on that line. Tommy, go ahead. You're with T.K. Hewland on the Ross Report. Welcome, Tommy. I just, yeah, I just have a, one quick comment. Y'all never mentioned boo-boos in uh, brokerage yet. Oh, my Lord. You're okay. right. And boo-boos? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. boo-boos on, on, on the brokerage highway. Oh, God. Yeah, boo-boos. And, and uh, what about mule lots? Did you ever play at mule lots? Uh, no, never played at Milots. Okay, that was more, I guess, more Cajun. Um, yeah, I maybe. played at the uh, what what club was it at uh, in in Bro- oh, at Paul's Lounge Paul, in Brobridge. That was Paul. a big one, Paul's yeah. Lounge, La Poussière, and of course Boo Boo's on the on the highway going right. to Brobridge. Well, we've we've had so much fun with you, TK. I am definitely going. Thank you. I'm going to definitely pump that shrimp festival. I know who's going to want to go, and it's my husband Ron, and we'll be there. Noon on August nineteenth. Can't wait to see you all. What a what a lineup! So it's going to be you. And thank you for calling. I'm so I'm so sorry for the beginning of the of, of, of the. Oh, the, honey, not to worry. Know, just... Not to okay. worry one bit. We love you so much. Take care, TK. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless you. You too. Bless you. All right, that's it for the Ross Report. Drive safely. Love each other. Be tolerant. All that good stuff. Listen to the music. I'm going to remind you about TK and Charlene and Warren and all those guys playing at the Shrimp Festival. Yeah, I'm not going to let you forget. And tonight we got that thing at the Petroleum Club, uh, the Fleur de Lis Republican Women. I hope you made your reservations. I have a feeling it's going to be a crowd with John Schroeder and Clay Higgins. 
We'll be back tomorrow, 22-hour break, and we'll be back. Love each other, huh? Bye-bye.